All right, we're live now. Hey guys, what's up? Happy New Year to everyone on YouTube. Happy New Year to people on Zoom and wherever they're watching. All right, let me just check. TK, I'm live. The link is here. Thank God for that. Okay. And on noon, I'll share the link. I already got my first like for the day. All right, let's aim for 10 likes. What do you say? I'm just being a YouTuber at this point. All right, but hey, who doesn't like likes, right? Okay, I think my highest is six or seven. Uh, on my other channel, I got like some decent likes, I think 20 or 30, maybe, I don't know. Okay, YouTube is so bothersome. If I, If I could just, rant about it for 10 minutes that'll that video would get a lot more likes all right let's get back to work what's air dots wow you, you got air dots air, you, these things uh airpods no they're just a anchor company ke, um air airpod copies or something tk my ipad turned off my video is full screen my handsome face Let's turn this back on. Share screen. This happens every time. Okay. 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 I think we can start now. All right. So I think there's also some issue with what the title of the video is. I changed it, but somewhere it's saying periodic tables. We're doing redox today. All right. Ooh, white. We're doing redox. Can everyone see my screen? It's all fine. What is this thing? Okay, I'll minimize that. Okay, setup is nice. It, it, these are just wires. I wanted to keep my video on today. It's a horrible camera. I'm just using the webcam. Yeah, yeah. right? But uh, they're just lights in the background. I just turned one on. Uh, it's not a, it's honestly not a nice setup. Um, but I wanted my face here. So when I'm, you know, explaining something, you guys can see me and like, relate to it more. Otherwise, I think it's always good if the teacher's face is in the video. And some may agree, some may disagree, I don't know what the consensus is, but I think it's important. Yes, yeah, so people are saying it's great. Okay. Oh, the setup is great. Thank you. Thank you very much. People on YouTube think setup is great. It's not really, they're just, it's practically a storage room at this point. Better than nothing though? Okay, all right. But I wanna start. Okay, the focus is redox. Actually, one thing, I think it was Mesum or someone asked for my notes. I shared those notes on Dropbox. I put them on Dropbox and I shared the link on, uh, I think I also put it on Noon. If I didn't, I will. Um, I'll also, I did put it on Teaching Circle. And I'll also share it at the bottom of this video after this video is done. So people on YouTube, like whoever can have access, I, I don't care. Just, uh, yeah, I don't care. Like, like the more people use them, if they find it useful, the better it is. Take it. Okay, some people saw them, they like it. You're welcome. I probably won't be making a lot more notes this year because I made so many notes in a short amount of time. My wrist started hurting really bad because of the mouse and the keyboard thing. So I'm gonna doctors advise me to not do that. Okay, how many people do we have online or so? 
Naman is also on YouTube and he's also on Zoom. Chalo. Okay. Or yeah, we have both people. Anyway, let's start. Okay, Redox. I want to say that remember moles and if you've gone through moles, you understand the word moles is quite scarier than what your work, what you end up doing. There's no difference between the word moles and the word dozen. They mean the same thing, just different numbers. And you you use moles a lot in detail in chemistry because it's very relevant to chemistry, much like the word dozen is very relevant to a baker, I guess. Okay. So if you were a baker, they'd use the word dozens to the point where you'd be scared of it as much as you are of the word moles. Okay. Another such scary word that comes in education, uh, or just chemistry, I'll speak on behalf of my subject and no other subject, well, it's not calculus and differentiation and integration. They're not hard concepts, but they're just scary words. That's what I was going for. And redox is one such word because it's just confusing for the technicality of it, uh, how technical it becomes and how little intrinsic inf information you get when you say redox. But redox, what is redox? But before I talk about redox, let me just say, I want you guys to tell me if you guys can tell me some types of chemical reactions that come to mind. What are they? Can you guys tell me some chemical reactions you know of? Okay, reduction and oxidation are there, sure. I don't wanna start with that because some people might not know that. But uh, what else? You know, I'll start with one. Uh, I'm cheating. Combustion. Isn't that one chemical reaction? That you know of? You know what it is, right? Acid and base, like a neutralization reaction? I'll write that down. Neutralization reaction. Neutralization reaction, that's one. Any other? But like, think more in terms of general terms, everyday life, because we haven't done too many, uh, I don't wanna throw fancy words over here. And by the way, just let me know if the audio is fine. Um, it's not too loud, it's not too, oh, well, yeah. Oh, rusting, I love it, love it, beautiful. Someone's saying rusting, rusting, brilliant. And I, why I'm too uh, so excited about uh, rusting is because I wanted to compare combustion and rusting. Now what exactly is combustion is something uh, reacting with oxygen to form an oxide, obviously, because if it reacts with oxygen. Decomposition is also a good one. Okay, TK, yeah. Hmm, my screen just is off ratio on the video compared to I think what I have open. That's interesting. Wow, my screen is ending here, and so it is on the screen, but, oh well. TK, this is an example of combustion. Let me just erase this and the numbers, and take this and bring it up here. This is an example of combustion. This is an, I'll give you an example for rusting. Rusting would be pure iron metal reacting with oxygen to form iron, uh, what is it? Let's go with iron three oxide, Fe2O3, or just FeO, why not? Iron oxide, take care. Now when you put it down chemically, they look very similar. And if I started, let's say if you were people who's maybe, you know, combustion and rusting are very commonplace examples, but if they weren't commonplace, you guys would have a hard time differentiating between the two. Right? Because technically they both look like carbon is combusting, it's reacting with oxygen. Why is it different from iron reacting with oxygen? But what are the characteristics of a combustion reaction? Well, every time you, like, I'm not formally defining it, but every time you close your eyes and I say blank combusted, like an iPhone combusted or like a car combusted, uh, my hand combusted, 
What comes to mind? It caught fire, it's burning, it's giving off heat. Fire, right? So combustion highlights that, so those sort of reactions, something it always has to do with oxygen, always possibly involves carbon, sometimes it doesn't, but it, like in English it doesn't, but it reacts, it's a reaction between something with oxygen that gives off a lot of heat energy, right? Flame and heat, fuels combust, wood com can combust, uh, carbon combusts, right? Iron doesn't combust. Iron can technically combust, but iron reacting with oxygen generally will be, unless you force it, it's gonna be a very slow reaction and it happens over time. And it's just that you have a piece of iron lying around, over time it just turns brown because it rusts. That's why, because iron is reacting with oxygen very slowly heat exchanges, everything is going on, but it's so stretched out that you don't witness anything. And that's what rusting is. Very similar reactions, honestly, but different names for it, because in our lives, it's, uh, they behave differently. If I say, oh man, my, you know, like my car combusted, you'd be like, oh my God, are you all right? But if I say, oh my God, oh man, my car is rusted, you'd be like, oh, get a new one or try getting it fixed, you know? So context matters. And this is what I'm trying to emphasize. Anyway, spent a lot of time talking about this, but these are little nuances that are different from each chemical reactions. If you look at it, they look very similar. And this is where I'm taking redox towards. Redox, sometimes you, when you look at the equation, you're like, why is this a redox reaction? Or why is this redox? Or what's going on? I don't get it. It's, you, come up with a definition for it, then you follow through. Like, is, it, is this a redox reaction? Some of you will say this is a redox reaction. I should say this is a redox reaction, right? So there are multiple names for, there are many types of reactions in the world. In the chemical world, there are many, many, many reactions. Acid and bases are uh, neutralizing is a reaction. Something burning or combusting is a reaction. Rusting is a reaction. There are many kinds of reactions. Decomposition is a reaction. Now these are just general terms for broad categories of reactions. There are wide varieties of reactions uh, going around and it is our duty, or not our duty, but to understand them properly, we try to categorize them. And when we try to categorize them, we come up with names for them once we see a pattern. If the heat is coming out of it and it's reacting with oxygen, call it combustion and move on, right? Similar to rusting. You see similar properties, you call it rusting. And this is where redox comes in. Sometimes calling it redox, though another point is sometimes you would call this a combustion reaction and sometimes you would call this an oxidation reaction or sometimes you would even call it a redox reaction. Why are you calling it three different things in di three different places? Your context matters. If you're in the fuel industry or whatever, you'll call it combustion. But if you're a chemical scientist, you'll call it you'll probably say it's being oxidized or there's a redox reaction happening over here. Take it. So it's a frame of mind. You can put a rusted metal bar on fire and in a bit there won't be any rest of it. Well, there will be a rest of it left, the oxide will be left, but you guys can Google iron combusting where they take steel wool and because steel wool has, is literally like wool made of steel, it's like, Caught a cotton ball, but it's actually an iron ball, right? And with high amounts of oxygen, because the surface area is so high, when you ignite it, that literally catches fire and it burns. But at that point in time, you will call it combustion. Take okay. it. All right. Or I think oxidation would be a better word, because combustion would imply like heat is given off. Uh, you're using that heat energy as fuel, like it's fuel is burning, and that you end up using that heat energy. Anyway. We're not talking about combustion and rusting, we're talking about redox. So let's try to understand what redox is. Thousands, these are by the way, the slides are present. And, and uh, if they're not on YouTube or anything, I'll share them with you guys, don't worry. Uh, after this, hopefully, I tend to forget, but in a day or two, worst case. Thousands of different, and this is what I'm trying to highlight here. Thousands of different reactions go on around us in labs and factories and homes. We can divide them into different ca groups. For example, two of the groups are neutralization reactions and precipitation reactions. If you don't know what a precipitation reaction is, don't worry. Okay, 
One big group that we're also studying today is called redox reactions in which oxidation and reduction are taking place at the same time. So a redox is kind of like a short form of saying oxidation and reduction, right? So the re in redox stands for Red, why is it so thin? The re in redox stands for reduction. And the dox, no, I guess the red in, and the ox in, it stands for oxidation. Take it. Make sense? A redox reaction is where reduction and oxidation just happens at the same time. Okay, so uh, what is reduction? I'll get there. Okay, now these words are reduction and oxidation, you know, like assassination. What does that mean? Well, assassinate means to kill someone. Assassination probably means an event or like, a, like a, what's the word for it? Like a... It's like when you're killing someone, that's what assassination is, right? So you derive it from the keyword where it's originated from. Assassination comes from the word assassinate. So assassination implies killing someone. Okay, and that's completely fine. If you apply the same logic to reduction and oxidation, you'll be lost and you'll be confused for a long time. Anyone confused in redox does this leap of intellect where they think, Reduction will have something to do with reducing. Kamora. No, right? Not really. What did I say? Assassination is killing. That's what I said. I just, I didn't say killing. Assassination means to assassinate someone, right? Like, it's a, like, you can make that same, um, what's the word? Um, inference or deduction. Right, but reduction doesn't mean it's re like the word reducing is a borrowed from English, but reducing means come on, no? It's not really and nothing's come hora yahan and you'll see a lot of oxidation reactions where oxygen is not even involved. So why call them that? Well, the word came before we properly understood what they were trying to emphasize, right? And once that word was there, it stuck. It stuck, it stuck, it stuck, now it's there, now you use it. So oxidation first was possibly defined by someone, something reacting with oxygen. Now it's not, but that can help you. But again, oxidation has nothing to do with oxygen, right? Does that make sense? I hope it does, and I'll move on. Let's look at this chemical reaction. Redox is all about chemical, oh, electron transfer. We've done a lot of talk about chemical tra uh, electron transfers, and well, all chemical reactions are, like are, well, not all, obviously, but electron exchanges. They're all electron exchanges. Take it. Consider this. What's happening electronically in this particular equation? Take it. What is going on? What's going on here is magnesium will react with oxygen. By react, I mean it gives two of its outer electrons to oxygen and they form an ionic bond, right? This is chemically what's happening. Magnesium ejects two electrons, oxygen catches two electrons, and now they're stuck together. That's what this earlier chemical equation is trying to highlight, yes? and just a visual representation of the same equation drawn here, an ionic product is being formed while magnesium and oxygen react. Take it. So what I have done in this particular slide is divided what's happening to magnesium and separated what's happening to oxygen in terms of half equations. Is it still blurry? Let me know if it improves or if if it doesn't improve. To me, it looks completely fine. I think it's on your end. Yeah, it's on your end. I will not be doing A-level live sessions. Sir Bilal might, but no guarantee. I think uh, he already has a lot of classes recorded online. 
ठीक है एडिशन रिएक्शन ठीक है इट हैज बीन फाइन ऑल लॉन्ग या आई थिंक इट्स फाइन आई थिंक इट्स वेरी आई डोंट वॉन्ट जिंक्स इट बट इट्स वेरी स्टेबल ठीक है ओके ओके सम डिवाइडिंग वट हैपन टू मैग्नीजियम एंड ऑक्सीजन इन टू टू डिफरेंट हाफ इक्वेशन आई हैपन यूज माई ग्लोई पैन वन आई थिंक all right magnesium is giving out electrons and this is how you write it and i put two here just to balance the two equations out right and oxygen takes those four electrons and this is how you write it and turns it into oxygen ions and that's it it's the same equation we're looking at it at a in a third like in like in a different but like you know this is one way of representing the information magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide great magnesium is giving electrons this is this is more of a same equation but more um it's an illustration but same equation same data is being shared with you right now over here is broken down we're just focusing on magnesium we're just focusing on oxygen theek hai and if you've noticed and if we've not really emphasized it but i think we did foreshadow it it's all about electron exchanges these electron exchange is important magnesium will always gain elect oh sorry always lose electrons oxygen will always gain reactant uh, electrons when it's reacting and this is important and there should be in chemistry a way to understand this by naming it and we do this is called reduction in oxidation the act of losing an electron is reduction simply put and the act of gaining electron sorry 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 <laughs> i always get confused the act of so i'll read so the act of reduction reduction the act of gaining an electron is always reduction the act of gaining electrons is always reduction the act of losing electrons is always oxidation has not what is oxidation it's just the loss of electrons does it have anything to do with oxygen it could but not necessarily it has you can almost say it has nothing to do with oxygen uh oxygen theek hai everyone clear can i get like yeses and like maybe not thumbs up but like yeses in the comments everyone clear i'll pause a moment for some questions yes understanding better okay good I'll also ask people online on YouTube to say yes. Okay, don't spam yes. I swear, um, addition and subtraction that's already a name for something else. But electrogenation and deelectrogenation, you know, just call it that. Vote for me as president and I will rename redox reactions and science will be a lot easier. My question to you guys is why don't they do it? the more you study science and other things at school it's only like months and years later you realize oh why don't they just call it this once you get it and uh, not present of pakistan present of the world i mean i have ambitions you can't be the prime minister of the world can you prime minister prime minister i don't know i think as a prime minister i should start and my sir bilal's son no no but we're very close he was my teacher so father figure uh like a older brother figure i think a teacher like i wouldn't like to me a teacher is like very high uh r- highly ranked he's my teacher he's my mentor he's a friend so oh, yeah i was a student 10 years ago I was studying the same thing what I'm teaching you guys today with him. Uh look how the world turns out, huh? But uh, yeah. I can take over the world. I'll red alert it. I don't know how like if you get that reference. It's a old strategy game. Anyway, let me move on. I'm not Sir Plus son. Uh he has a daughter, a very cute daughter. She you guys have seen her. What are you guys talking about? You know. Okay, anyway, moving on. I'm 30, he's 40, so we it just won't work that way either. Okay. In case 
uh, I mix up my oxidation and reductions. You look 16, yeah, I get that a lot. Um, it's not how I look, it's how I act. Yeah, I get 22 a lot. People are shocked. Taken. Oh, the colors look really nice this time around. Okay, oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. And right now, seconds before when I got confused, when I said, when I mixed up the two, because I was reading while trying to say something and I shouldn't do that, but I fixed myself by the use of this mnemonic, oil rig. This stands for oxygen is loss, loss of what? Electrons. Reduction is gain. Gain of what? Electrons. Yay. Take care. Oxidation is loss of electrons. This is actually the definition of it. This is how you should understand it. Every time electrons are being exchanged, if they're being gained, it's reduction, and if they're being lost, it's oxidation. Agreed? Agreed? Okay, people on YouTube, I, I don't think there are too many this time around but people on YouTube aren't um, in like, what's the word? Participating. I ask questions, they don't really respond. Okay, kya kare? I guess it's more of a passive, passive content delivery system for the end consumer. Okay. Understanding, uh, like everyone's clear what oxidation is. And let's take a look at oxidation in particular this case. Oxidation is loss of electrons. However, there are other definitions for it. What do I mean by that? One is that oxidation is gain of oxygen. Can you think of why? Here's a good question. If anything is reacting with oxygen, I can safely say that thing is oxidized. Why do I say that? Why does that make sense? And why is that just a thing? Again, I would highlight, don't think, Hi, Nazif, how are you? What's up? No, no, they haven't. I didn't even see older. But some are. There was uh, Gayatri. Shout out to Gayatri. She was like very active early on at least. But it's okay. Okay. Why is the gain of oxygen, something reacting with oxygen, pure oxygen, why would that also be considered oxidation? AOR, Nasim, what's up? How's it going? How's it going? My question to you people on Zoom and on YouTube. Why is something react? Because I told you what oxidation is, right? It's in the name. It's in the name. No, it's not because it's in the name. But that was the false association they made earlier. Because oxygen is gaining electrons, right? And if oxygen has to gain electrons, in Buddha Baba ko agar gain karna hai electrons, if it has to gain electrons, if someone's getting richer, someone else has to go get poorer. If this guy has to gain electrons and that's the only thing it can do, magnesium will lose electrons. It'll lose electrons. So anytime anything is reacting with oxygen, it automatically loses its electrons because oxygen will always gain its electrons. And if it's losing its electrons, it is oxidizing. This is also a redox reaction, but I'm just focusing on the oxidation bit, right? You're absolutely right. But I don't wanna go there right now. And that makes sense. Like I want people to understand this is oxidation. What is redox, right? And if you see anywhere oxidation is taking place, obviously reduction will taking place will be taking place there as well because electrons are what? Think of them as money. If someone gets rich, the other one has to get poorer because there is a finite number of electrons. Magnesium will give out two electrons, so oxygen will have to gain two electrons. If it doesn't, then the ratios won't match, which we use as the basis of understanding our uh, what is the formula of an ionic compound that's being formed. It's like stealing? Oh, I don't know. I think they can be chill about it, like it's not offensive, maybe. Okay, someone has to be get robbed for someone to steal. 
that's my new way of explaining redox. ठीक है This is what I mean. It's not because oxygen के साथ कोई चीज हमेशा react करती तो it's oxi oxidation. It's because anything reacting with oxygen will always lose its electrons. Yeah. And hence is undergoing oxidation. Just think, this is a French word oxidation. In French, oxi oxidation just means has nothing to do with oxygen, right? So think of it like that. Yeah. Who on Zoom is saying, if I take your computer, I think he likes my computer. If he takes my computer, I lose a computer. And yeah. Curvy arrows? You mean um, radicals, free radicals, and mechanisms? Uh, I won't. What do you mean curly arrows? I don't understand what that is. Do you mean, uh, but like, we're not talking about ALOs. You can always message in the chat later on. This is like a bad time to discuss these things. So here's a good question. Saad is asking, sir, then how is this specific type of reaction different from a normal reaction? It's not, it's just a reaction and we're calling it redox because we're looking at it at a frame, uh, at a particular frame of mind. You, If this was slow enough, you could also call it rusting, but this is more uh, oxidizing. We call it oxidizing. Uh, you know, the same thing, that's a good point. And I want you guys to be aware of this particular point, what Saad's highlighting. Saad's point I'll reiterate is, sir, how is this redox any different from any other reaction or something similar? Yeah, from normal reaction, how is this different? Where, this is what I'm trying to highlight. If something is losing its electrons, it's gonna be oxidation. It's just another name for loss of electrons. Aye, aye. Does that make sense? So, you know, there's a strong concept in artificial intelligence. I was taking a 101, AI 101. If you want to solve a particular problem, right? You have to first define it and name it, give it a name. If there's no name for it, you come up with a name. So they were trying to figure out how to deal with these electron exchanges and they call it oxidation and reduction for the um, betterment of mankind, but for the, at the cost of every student trying to learn chemistry from ever, right? So it's such a bad word to use, but the idea behind it is very simple. If something is gaining electrons, it is reducing. And if something is losing electrons, it's just oxidizing. The words are weird, but, and I have to remember, I have to use oil rig every time I say it. You can tell, right? I pause every time, like I have to do it because to me, I'm physically repulsed at the idea that they're still called that. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Can I move on? I'm gonna move on. Okay, similarly, oxidation is also loss of hydrogen and it's the same reason why, right? Anything I think this equation I remember from last time was incorrect, but let's see if we can. If, can we count the charges? What, if some loss of hydrogen, right? So sulfur over here should have what charge? There are two hydrogens over here. So sulfur should have what charge? It should have a charge of plus, no, minus two. And now what's the charge on sulfur? It's zero. So sulfur's charge went from minus two to zero. So sulfur, in other words, gave out two electrons. Right? And if it's losing electrons, what's that called? Oxidation. And why am I emphasizing on the oxygen and the hydrogen bit? Because we'll see a lot of reactions with oxygen and hydrogen in them, for one thing. The other thing is, when you're looking at an equation, it's hard to see 
um, if it's being if sulfur over here is being oxidized or re reduced. But if you look at hydrogen and if your definition includes hydrogen, loss of hydrogen is also oxidation. So then you can clearly see hydrogen is being lost. So this has to be oxidation because you've seen it happen in detail once and you're just generalizing that one concept. In this reaction, is magnesium going through both oxidation and reduction since it's losing electrons but also turning into a, an oxide? Iman has a good question. Okay, Iman on YouTube is asking an interesting question. So here's Iman, I'm specifically talking to you and I want others to listen as well. You won't say, you say magnesium is being oxidized because what's happening to magnesium, that's a really good point. Magnesium turns into Mg2 plus and it's right attached right next to oxygen. They just pair up together because of the charges, but it doesn't really gain it. Tika, it's not really gaining it. Like in one sense, you're right, I know. What, a, what about a covalent if it was a covalent compound? And the lines are a bit trickier then, but your point is still there. But no, you won't see it like that. But bear in mind, sometimes you'll say that particular element is being oxidized to magnesium 2 plus or magnesium. So you'll say magnesium is being oxidized. And other times you'll say that entire compound is being oxidized. And that's a bit of a nuance we'll try to resolve with better understanding. I think it would be incorrect for someone to say the entire compound is oxidizing. You mean one little particular part of that uh, entire compound is oxidizing or reducing, or maybe a group of it. But we'll get there. We'll, that's a good question. Bring that up in, the, in a bit once that comes up again. I wanna explain that one more time. That's a really good question. Take care. Okay. In the same way, the opposite of everything that is oxi oxidation is reduction because oxygen is loss of electrons whereas reduction is gain of electrons. And if oxidation is gain of oxygen, reduction has to be loss of oxygen. And if oxidation is loss of hydrogen, reduction is gain of hydrogen. Take exact opposite. I wonder if I have some examples. Okay, this is a redox example. Okay. But a lot has been said, right? Now this is what I do when I'm doing a redox paper. Like I know if I made a paper, mein redox all right. This is what I'll do. At the right back of it, because it's hard for me to remember these things and I get confused very easily. So if I have it written down, I'll never be confused. So I write it down. And what do I write? I don't take a cheat in there, like a cheat sheet in there, in the paper, but I'll write it down. I know a few things. I know what it's called, well it's oxidation, and it's reduction. Now notice what I'll do, I'm doing. One, the main definition I know for both of them, which is oxidation is, wrong arrow, it is the loss of electrons, whereas reduction is the gain of electrons. But because of the name, I understand oxidation, I know it's false association, but gain of oxygen is also oxidation. I know I remember that and I've seen that happen. I've taught that to kids. But oxidation is also gain of oxygen. I can see it like that as well if I want to. So the reduction being the opposite of oxidation is loss of oxygen. Chica. And oxidation is loss of hydrogen. How do I know that? Well, I could figure it out by writing a chemical equation and it'll work. But how I remember it is, well, one was gain, the other one was a loss. And 
if oxy oxidation is gain of oxygen, it's also loss of hydrogen. And that's how I remember it, honestly. I'm just telling everyone a easier way to remember it. Or maybe you have an easier way to remember it. That's how I, li I like to remember it. And the reduction will always be the opposite of reduction or uh, oxidation, where it is the gain of hydrogen. Okay, someone's, I read somewhere, this is really weird. Why are the three definitions for one word? Saad, I'll ask you this question. Why do you think there are three definitions of this word? I'll ask you and put this equation in front. Don't read anything, focus on the equation. Saad is asking a good point. He's asking, why are there three definitions of the same thing? The first line about electrons is the definition. The other two are easier ways of uh, looking at oxidation. Because if I have to figure out if magnesium is oxidizing, what do I have to do? I have to first code the charges on magnesium, then magnesium over here, which is two plus. And zero, it's getting a charge of plus two. That means it's losing two electrons, right? And is loss of electrons oxidation or reduction loss of electrons is oxidation. So after 30 seconds in like three step mental process, I realized magnesium was oxidized. But the easier way is, hey, magnesium is reacting with oxygen. It's oxidizing. Because you've seen it, I've shown this to, this to you. I've shown this to you that something reacting with oxygen will always lose electrons. So might as well, instead of making going from A to B to C, instead of doing that, just go to A to C. Use this path and it's more direct because it's directly, ignore the length. It's not a vector or anything. Just go to A to C instead of going from A to B to C, you know? When I say what's five times five, you don't calculate what's five, okay. Five ones are five, five twos are 10. You don't do that, you just say 25. Because you know that's the answer. You've done it so many times, you know it. 10 times 10, what is it, 100? Or 10 times nine, what is it, 90? What you realize, you don't multiply it. What you realized, the easier way about it is, nine ke aage, if anything's multiplying with any number, use that number and put a zero in front of it. And that's what you do, right? You don't actually calculate it. That's the easier way. And that's what I'm saying. The easier way of identifying oxidation is by looking at either oxygen or hydrogen, because these two are show up a lot more than other things. You can do it for other things, with other things as well, but it just gets more complicated after that and defeats the purpose. Anything reacting with oxygen will be oxidized in essence. And that makes sense because oxygen will gain electrons and the whatever reacting with it will have to lose electrons and losing electrons is oxidation. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now Saad, let me ask you again, do you understand why there are three definitions of the same thing? Right? If I ask you what is oxidation, you don't ever say loss of electrons or gain of, oh, don't ever say where is it? Where did I write it? Okay, it's here. Don't ever say oxidation is gain of oxygen or loss of hydrogen, right? The formal definition is it is the loss of electrons in a chemical reaction, right? But you use the other two definitions to identify them. Maybe I'm using the word definition a bit loosely. I shouldn't be using it. But in essence, it's one way of looking at it. Okay, I wanna look at uh, through oxidation reduction said losing electrons, but also turning into an oxide. I think I answered Iman's question. It's still there. Okay, seven likes, can we get 10 likes? I'm just, I'm just gonna do it. Okay, now what is a redox reaction? You may ask, it's oxidation and reduction happening at the same time. Over here, I'm highlighting oxidation and reduction happening at the same time. Now, some of you have already realized and mentioned oxidation and reduction were already taking place earlier as well. I'll talk about that more, Naman. You're jumping ahead slightly. 
ठीक है एनीथिंग रिएक्टिंग ओवर हियर इफ समथिंग इज ऑक्स इफ समवन गेट्स पोअर समवन इन द वर्ल्ड हैज टू गेट रिचर इफ समवन इज बीइंग रिड्यूस्ड द अदर थिंग हैज टू गेट ऑक्सीडाइज्ड सेम कांसेप्ट बिकॉज़ ऑक्सीजन इज लॉस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स रिडक्शन इज गेन ऑफ um electrons much like someone is getting rich is just another way of saying increasing in uh, his funds are increasing his money count is increasing his wallet's getting bigger there's a word for it you could just say, easily say hey he's getting a lot more dough in his well rhymes with dough he's getting a lot more money uh, in his bank now or the easier way of saying is he's getting richer and that simplicity just goes a mile uh not a mile but yeah now i'm i lost that train of thought but we highlighted we saw and if that this makes sense let me go back to over here i said magnesium is being oxidized what's being reduced over here someone's getting rich other one has to get poorer right magnesium is being oxidized over here and oxygen is being reduced because oxygen has a zero charge right now and over here it'll have a 2 minus charge it gained electrons obviously right it gained electrons it reduced and hence this is a redox reaction it's got a huge flow of dough that rhymes nice I like that. Does that make sense? If you see anywhere someone's getting rich in the world, someone's getting poor in the world as well. Right? If you see something is being re- being oxidized, is taking a shower and money, okay. Yeah. Uh if someone yeah, if something is being oxidized, the other thing is being reduced i i think i'm much more it's so much more natural for me to have my face there so i'm not too aware like i can use my hand gestures to communicate i like this so much more ha ye kaisa sawal bhai someone asked online uh, uh, on zoom how do we know which side is gaining and which side is losing what does that mean you guys should spend different ways of looking at the chemical equation now i think it's been like 16 years for me i don't know how i used to think of it but the best way and i think i told you guys this see of see this as a before and an after and that's a very good way of looking at it you have magnesium over here and oxygen over here bonded in a covalent compound but it's just oxygen right the atom is there the magnesium atom is there in a different form but they're there right now there magnesium 2 plus in this form and oxygen 2 minus what happened to oxygen before it was just oxygen and it gained two electrons now it's two electrons richer so to speak so it what happened to it reduced magnesium lost those two electrons when oxygen gained it a full form or something why is it oil oil is a way of remembering what's happening oxidation oxidation is loss o stands for oxidation i is is and l is loss of electrons hey eight likes can we get 10 is the goal 10 and if we get lucky maybe 12 oh okay now why am i being that guy okay i shouldn't be that guy is it greedy of me to get more likes is that unfair what do you guys think am i being like selfish or maybe another nasty word am i being greedy about likes i don't know it's just validates man it's a teaching if you're not getting validated what's the point theek hai rid and what's rig you may ask reduction is this is a way of remembering what it is reduction is 
गेन गेन ऑफ वॉट इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ठीक है लेट्स मूव ऑन एंड हेयर वी सी रिडक्शन इन ऑक्सीडेशन टेकिंग प्लेस ठीक है ओके हेयर अनदर एग्जाम्पल हाइड्रोजन रिएक्टिंग विद ऑक्सीजन टू फॉर्म वॉटर एंड दिस फनी कज बोथ ऑफ दीज आर दे आर द टू ऑफ दीज पार्ट ऑफ आर डेफिनेशन फॉर रीडॉक्स एज वेल लाइक अकॉर्डिंग टू मी आई एम कॉलिंग दैम द डेफिनेशन टेन इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो 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 ऑफ द नाउ आई वॉन्ट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो लाइक टेन टू द कैन आई हैव वन मॉल ऑफ रियक्ट्स आई थिंक दैन आई एम बी ग्रेडी ए नाइन रियक्ट्स लुक दैट ओके एनी वे लेट मी गो बैक टू दिस इक्वेशन लेट मी टॉक अबाउट दिस मोर how do we and you guys should actively look at these slides and figure out make half equations of them and see actively ke what is is it really oxidizing is it really reducing and i'll do that i think it's just reacting with okay let me just write that equation let me add a blank paper i have copper oxide reacting with hydrogen to give me pure copper i believe and h2o that's what's happening and let's start with copper right what's happening to copper copper has a charge of what plus 2 right now copper has a charge of what it's just an atom zero it char its charge went from plus 2 to zero what happened to its electrons so it should have it gained two electrons didn't it so this is redox so copper was ox re reduced copper has been re has been reduced now notice i am not saying copper oxide is reduced cop saying copper oxide would mean i'm involving oxygen oxygen into the equation i'm just talking referring to copper copper has been reduced theek hai and that's important on the other side hydrogen has a zero charge on it and now it has a positive one charge how do i know if x ha if hydrogen has a unknown charge x there are two hydrogens in water and one oxygen which has a charge of minus 2 so x has to be positive 1 right i'll talk about this a bit more in, in a bit ठीक है एंड दैट्स व्हाई आई से हाइड्रोजन हैज अ चार्ज ऑफ पॉजिटिव वन एंड हाइड्रोजन यू नो बॉन्डेड टू समथिंग हैज अ चार्ज ऑफ पॉजिटिव वन एंड आई इग्नोर द फैक्ट दैट दिस इज अ कोवेलेंट कंपाउंड एंड दे डोंट हैव चार्ज पार्टिकल्स फॉर वन सेकंड एंड आई विल गेट टू दैट व्हाई आई एम कॉलिंग दिस विद अ पॉजिटिव चार्ज आई विल गेट टू दैट बट इफ यू अज्यूम हाइड्रोजन हैज अ पॉजिटिव चार्ज यू कैन से ओह इट्स लूजिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन्स बिकॉज़ इट वेंट फ्रॉम जीरो टू अ डिफिशिएंसी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स So it lost electrons. So it was reduced. Hydrogen was reduced. Oh, oxidized. Did I mean oxidized? Lost, no. Yeah. See, I mean this mistake all the time. It's oxidized. ठीक है. Now I'll refer to Saad's question earlier. Even though it was answered, look how much time it took me to figure out copper being oxidized and hydrogen, copper being reduced and hydrogen being oxidized. It took me a good while. And if I take a closer look at the equation, what is happening to copper? Copper has oxygen with it, and it's losing that oxygen. So my definition, what I'm told you guys. also in was oxygen and if i remember that i could just say a hey, loss of oxygen is reduction and you go a to c or you go from a to b to c your call in my o level times i didn't like going directly because i thought it was too much i would take the longer way because i liked like that more it was more natural but sometimes it might slow you down theek hai and a lot of questions are designed in a way where they're testing 
this part out. Okay, can you identify oxygen? Like you can still do it the other way. It's not a challenge, but um, it just costs more time. And papers like the MCQ paper, your P1 paper, uh, and for IGCSE, your MCQs paper, time is sometimes of the essence. So those questions are designed to see, literally you'll see this equation and they'll say, copper is uh, uh, reduced, copper is oxidized, hydrogen is oxidized, hydrogen or you know, nothing is happening, right? And you have to answer that. So if you look at copper, you can confidently say it's losing oxygen, losing oxygen is reduction. So copper is reduced and that's it. It took me four seconds to look at the thing and answer it versus probably 15 seconds if I did it the long way. Okay, that's why the other two definitions are important. But that's it, you can still get by without them. Take it, any questions so far? I think I went a little fast at the end and I have five minutes left. Any questions so far guys? Understanding any clarity? I don't see how many people are online. Can someone tell me how many people are online on YouTube? Just like if you guys can take a look at your number. I don't know if it shows, yes, that free radical end mechanism. Zeno Dawn, I, I won't be able to do that, I'm sorry. Uh, Sir Bilal might be able to, but his videos are already there. You can check our history in our channel. You'll find free radical key questions and mechanism in detail, those videos are already there. TK, no questions, can I move on? Four viewers on YouTube, oh my God, that's kind of bad. Nine likes, but four views? Okay, I'll, I'll make two. TK, but, you're double dipping, Noman, aren't you on YouTube as well? Anyway, let's move on. What is the full definition of oxidation? Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is the gain of electrons. Hmm, yeah. Xenodon, I'm surprised you're still here. TK. Magnesium reacts with sulfur dioxide like this. Use the labeled arrows to show which substance is oxidized and which is reduced. Guys, try it. Write down the equation, try it. Give it some space so you can play around with it. Try it. Well, it was mostly Sir Bilal who did the 42 day. I mostly did the work on the slides and everything. But hey, we're trying to help everyone. We're trying to normalize high quality education, man. It is, a, yes, okay, that's good. It also helps you with your um, A-levels, you know, Dawn, because it's also in, uh, uh, what do you call it, A-levels. Having a good understanding in O levels will also help it in A levels. Magnesium is giving two electrons to sulfur. Well, maybe, yeah, two sulfur, yeah. Yes. Identify, okay. So I'll use the idea about oxygen being gained or lost because it's easier for me with that. I can also check uh, charge-wise, right? Now, magnesium is gaining oxygen, so this has to be oxidation. This is oxidation. I'm not, okay, magnesium is oxidized. TK, magnesium is undergoing oxidation, whereas sulfur is undergoing reduction. And you can also verify it 
by the charges. Magnesium has a zero charge, it has a plus two charge. It has a plus two charge, that means it lost two electrons, loss of electrons is oxidation. Longer way, but you can still do it. Now notice what's happening to oxygen. The charge on oxygen over here is minus two. Right? And the charge over here for oxygen is minus two. And you might argue why the charge over here is minus two because it's a covalent compound. But right now, take a leap of faith. I'll expand on why exactly I'm saying it's minus two. I will explain myself, no worries. Tika, what's happening to oxygen? Is it oxidizing or reducing? What is happening to it? What is happening to it, ladies and gentlemen? Someone says reduction. 11 likes, can we get 12 likes? It's six, okay, no we can't, oh. What's happening to oxygen, guys? Is it gaining electrons or losing electrons? Oh, you did it? Oh, that's kind of cheating, I guess. Ah, 12, all right, okay, 12. How about 14? I'll never be happy. Well, is it gaining because the charge for in the before part, oh, hey, 13 now, can we get 14? Wow. But oxygen has a negative two charge to before the reaction takes place, and it still has a negative two charge after the reaction has taken place. Has it gained electrons? Has it lost electrons? Let's not even call it redu reduction or oxidation. Is it gaining electrons or losing electrons? What's happening to it? Nothing's happening to it. It's still taking part. Pele, it was covalently bonded, now it's ionically bonded, but it still has the same number of electrons. Nothing's happening to oxygen, redox-wise, electronic-wise. It's not gaining or losing electrons. Fourteen. All right. Can we go six? Let's make a higher aim. Can we go twenty? I don't think there. How are you? How is that going that high? I don't even know. But can we get twenty? I don't know. Can we? Why am I slouching down? Sorry. Okay. But do you guys understand? Nothing's happening to oxygen. It's not gaining or losing electrons. So it's not oxidizing and it's not reducing. Understood? I hope people understand this. Maybe let's just end it here. Let me give you this as work and maybe we'll, maybe Sir Bilal might continue this tomorrow, but I think he'll continue with this periodic table thing. I'll continue with this uh, possibly on Wednesday. TK, or maybe even a bit early. I d did do feel, I think we missed out a few days together because there were two classes where we missed. So I did want to take a few more classes with you guys, and that's okay. And we'll do uh, a bit of more redox. TK, yeah, 15 likes. Definitely could go to 16, but 20, long shot. Okay, is that okay? Can you guys take a screenshot of this, screen grab of this, and figure out what's being oxidized, what's being reduced, and what's, if there's something that's, nothing's happening to anything, we can work with it. Sir, should I ask off topic? Okay, class is over. You can ask off topic. Okay, you have other accounts and you you keep liking it. Okay, I guess, thank you. <laughs> you have to sign in, that's noble. That's a commitment there, cello. But yeah, Saad, uh, ask your off topic question. Thank you guys for coming in. All right, we're signing out. I'm just gonna ask Saad's question. Hey, 16, 16. Can we get 17? Can we get at 17? 17 going once, twice. Cedar is better and Nix than Nixer, right? Man, it's been 12 years possibly, 10 years since I went to Nixer. I studied at Nixer, right? And I taught at Cedar. So I've seen great things at Cedar. I saw great things at Nixer. Like my time at Nixer was great. 
I think as a student, I appreciate it a lot more. But um, I think people will tell you different things. Um, academically, I think both schools are strong. Uh, it, then the great thing about Nixer is, and from the day, I don't know how true it is, but knowing the people who are running the place, I know it's true, is that um, they they push you right at the end. No? Like, like when I was there, the events that were happening at school, the major events, we were organizing them from calling the... You know, like we had this thing called, a, it was a water park sort of thing, turned next to, into a water park. We turned the entire campus into a water park. You know, we had slides and whatever, we were throwing water on teachers and you know, it was a lot of fun, right? And we, we did it. And that was a great part for Nixer. Uh, Cedar, on the, on the other hand, has a lot of core pro I don't know what Nixer is doing right now, but I'm sure they're all great things. I should be more connected. What Cedar's doing right now is, I love their core program and how much diversity they have. So both are offering you great things. It's like trying to go for maybe like Pepsi or Coke, iPhone and Android. It's a, it bottles down, down to, it bottles down to personal preference. Do you wanna be, be trained as a debater, you know? For example, as a debater, and you want to excel at that, between the two, I'd go to Nixer. You know, they have a strong history of winning a lot of debate competitions. It's kind of stuff like that. So maybe you want to look at their extracurricular activities, what they offer, and pick the one you want. Take it. Yeah, like, it's uh, it's not that one's better at the other. They both have a view on what is best for a student. Right? And one will focus on one thing and the other will focus on the other thing. It's not like one is bad at it. They just don't want to focus because you know, your school is eight hours long. You only can focus on so many things, six to eight hours long. All right, take it. Yes, you want to figure out what you want to, uh, what course you want to take at Cedar or what programs or extracurricular activities Nixer has to offer that really interest you. Nixer and Cedar both have their uh, Nixer Day and Cedar Day, I don't know what Cedar calls it, but they tell you, they educate you on what they have to offer. Attend those and you'll, it'll give you a really good idea. And also like what really makes your school a really good place is just the right friends and the right teachers and the like not good teacher, but the teacher you connect with, not you know, I like to think I'm a good teacher, but maybe not every student is benefiting from my class. You know? So Blal is at Cedar? Yeah. That's, yeah, but Sir Blal is also here. TK. Anyway, I'll see you guys uh, Wednesday. Hopefully, maybe even sooner. Can't help everyone. Yeah. TK. Bye bye, guys. Take care. Take care. All right, 16 likes, we're ending at 16 likes. All right guys, thank you for coming, thank you for attending. Uh, YouTube people, you've been great. Khuda Hafiz, people at Zoom, bye-bye, take care, bye-bye. And whoop.